At this year's New York Auto Show, Subaru will be presenting the all-new fifth-generation Forester to replace the current model, which first launched in 2012. The teaser campaign is already underway, starting with the first official photo revealing the new Forester's rear taillight design. It gave us hope that the new Forester will adopt a more aggressive design inspired by recent concepts like the Visiv Tour. Ahead of its official reveal next week, leaked photos taken from a Japanese magazine have revealed the mid-size crossover's design. The photos, published by Alcarnu show that the new Forester will have an evolutionary design with minor styling tweaks. We were hoping for a more striking design, but then this isn't a crossover that's renowned for having bold styling. There are still some cues from the Visiv Future concept revealed a few years ago, but its daring design has been toned down considerably for the all-new Forester. At the front is a new fascia with a larger grille and new restyled headlights, as well as plastic body cladding and a silver skid plate below the grille. Elsewhere, the bodywork features swooping character lines beneath the greenhouse and above the side skirts that inject some flair. The rear looks familiar, but features new tail lights connected by a horizontal chrome strip. While the leaked images haven't been verified, they should provide a good indication of what the final production model will look like. It's a bit disappointing to see that Subaru hasn't been more daring with the design, but then the automaker doesn't want to spoil its successful formula. After all, the Forester is one of Subaru's most popular models and sells well in the US. Details are being kept under wraps for now, but we know the new Forester will ride on the new Subaru Global Platform, which underpins the current Impreza. All-wheel drive will no doubt be available as standard. We can also expect to see the usual range of four-cylinder boxer engines and a CVT, as well as advanced tech that comes as part of Subaru's EyeSight Driver Assist. Expect to see more official teasers of the new Subaru Forester in the run-up to its official debut in New York on March 28th. Nearly eight months have passed since Musk handed over the first sets of keys to Tesla's mission-critical Model 3 sedans, and the first reviews are just coming in. That's because the cars have been trickling off the assembly line at a much slower pace than planned, and for months the only ones able to land one in their driveway were Tesla employees, investors and close friends of the company. Now that the Model 3 is getting into the hands of the general public, outlets including Consumer Reports, Edmonds and Strategy Analytics have taken delivery and published their impressions. Reviews among this group have generally been mixed. Driving dynamics and handling were among their consistent pros, while some of the commonly cited cons have had to do with poor build quality and problems with so many of the car's controls being tied to its touchscreen. Several analysts have cited Model 3 reviews as a significant factor in determining where Tesla shares are headed. According to Tony Sakunagi, an analyst at Sanford C. Bernstein and Company, the investment thesis around the company hinges on its ability to boost production of the car, manufacturing it profitably and with good build quality. Sakunagi wrote in a recent report to clients, the company is well behind target with regards to how many of the sedans it's been making. He called profitability and build quality important wild cards and said that failure on those two fronts could be meaningfully detrimental to the company's fortunes. Here's a roundup of some of the first Model 3 reviewers' impressions, Consumer Reports gave the Model 3 a fairly positive first drive review. While the publication's last model has had some issues with the fitted trim pieces, the magazine said that the Model 3's interior felt solid and that it hadn't yet noticed any squeaks, rattles or misalignments. Jake Fisher, director of auto testing at Consumer Reports, said in a phone interview, it's honestly more like driving a Porsche Boxster than a typical luxury sedan. It's really fun and engaging to drive. The experience for rear passengers isn't as great.
Fisher said that the Model 3's back seats sink close to the ground and are uncomfortable. He said, you are sitting so low that your knees are high up in the air and you don't have any thigh support. The Model 3's 15-inch center screen is has an impressive level of capability and functionality, the magazine said, but it's packed with menus and drivers are forced to use it in ways that don't always make sense, such as to adjust the car's adaptive cruise control speed. Edmunds had a similar take on the touchscreen, praising its clean and futuristic looks, while lamenting that its ease of use isn't as stellar. The car shopping researcher said the Model 3 was dramatically quicker and more engaging to drive than other popular EVs, such as the BMW i3 and the Chevrolet Bolt. It was harsher on how well the sedan was built, calling its body panel gaps inconsistent and criticizing the cracked vanity mirror and broken driver's seat shell in the car it took home. More worrisome, Edmunds has alerted Tesla's service center about problems it's had getting an appointment, and said new parts have been slow to come in. Dan Edmonds, director of vehicle testing, said in a phone interview, the fact that Tesla would ship a car that doesn't have everything all worked out is a bit off-putting to me. It feels like the service centers are still staffing up to meet demand, and the service system isn't totally synchronized. Market Researcher Strategy Analytics published a review focused on user experience and found that the Model 3's touchscreen is exceptionally difficult to use while driving and posited that it may have been designed for a self-driving future which has yet to arrive. Chris Schreiner, Director of the User Experience Practice, said in an interview, the Model 3 drove pretty well. It handled very well. Autopilot worked well on it. I didn't really have any issues with performance. But the positioning of the screen is a suboptimal experience for the driver. It's an uncomfortable reach to use, and all of this information like the speedometer and the controls for the windshield wiper are on the screen, which takes some getting used to. Schreiner also said that Tesla's speech recognition system in the Model 3 isn't ready. You can say send a text message saying I'm going to be late, and you will see that appear on screen accurately. But then it says try again. It can't actually send the text message. The name Tesla may be synonymous with electric cars, but since the end of 2010, Nissan's been quietly selling the fully electric Leaf hatchback. It was even popular enough to earn a second generation. But from the sound of it, Nissan thinks sales of its next electric car will blow Leaf sales out of the water. That's because it's reportedly planning to turn the Leaf into an SUV. According to Autocar, Nissan's developing an electric SUV that looks a lot like the IMX concept we saw last year. Despite being larger and offering more ground clearance, Autocar believes this electric crossover will be built on the Leaf's platform. And when it finally goes into production, Nissan expects the electric crossover to be extremely popular. Mamoru Aoki, Nissan's head of European design, told Autocar, of course, we have the new Leaf, but I think the production version of the IMX concept will become a breakthrough model. The IMX is not just a concept car. In a few years, it will appear. According to Aoki, removing the engine will make the production IMX much more spacious than its gas-powered competition. Aoki said, the interior is notably bigger than with a conventional vehicle and there's much more usable space, thanks to the totally flat floor allowed by the battery pack. The dashboard is also pushed right back because the HVAC unit is under the bonnet. So far, there's no word on how much Nissan's electric SUV will cost or what kind of range it will actually offer. But Hyundai's Kona Electric may soon face some serious competition. The well-rounded Subaru Forester is set for a significant update and will premiere in fifth-generation guise at the 2018 New York Auto Show on March 28. 
The Forester has been a staple in Subaru's crossover range for more than 20 years and in its current form, is a tantalizing option for anyone looking at a reasonably priced compact-sized crossover. Last year, it was the brand's second best-selling model with around 180,000 units sold in the States, just behind the Outback. The 2019 Forester will be even more advanced and of course benefit from a visual overhaul. The Forester isn't the best-looking option in the market, especially when compared to the edgy new VW Tiguan. Subaru designers have tried to address this for the model's fifth generation. Camouflaged prototypes spot on the road show that some cues will be shared with the larger Ascent and like many new cars, the 2019 Forester will be slightly larger than its predecessor. Bits and pieces from the Viziv Future concept will also make their way onto the Forester. The interior design remains a mystery but as mentioned, Subaru will upgrade many of the important pieces of tech. At the heart of these updates will be improvements to the eyesight system that includes adaptive cruise control, lane keep assistance sway warning, pre-collision braking, and pre-collision throttle management. The 2019 Forester will be the fourth model in the range to ride on the Subaru Global Platform, conceived to be used by the firm's entire family of models. Importantly, the use of this platform will allow Subaru to develop electrified versions of the new Forester if it sees fit. The crossover could be the first Subaru to benefit from the same plug-in hybrid tech found in the Prius Prime after partnering up with Toyota. No matter what Subaru's decision on electrifying the Forester is, there will be the typical selection of four-cylinder boxer engines available to customers alongside a CVT in standard all-wheel drive. We hope that Subaru will continue to offer the option of a manual gearbox. At this point if the new Ascent's 2.4-liter turbo boxer that delivers 260 horse and 277 pound-feet of torque will make it into the new Forester, but fingers crossed. If you're open-minded and not ultimately sold on the Forester's new design, engines, and price, don't fret as this segment of the market has numerous alternatives. The Honda CRV is perhaps the most well-rounded option in the segment and can be purchased for a little over $24,000 making it an excellent bang for your buck option. Sticking with the Japanese theme, the Mazda CX-5 is also a fierce competitor and starts at $24,150 in base form while $26,215 gets you the SUV and the better at care touring guys. Of the vehicles in this segment, it is perhaps the best looking. Those with a soft spot for German vehicles always have the VW Tiguan to consider. It starts at $24,595. TTHE 2019 Subaru Forester could get a price hike over the $22,795 commanded by the existing model, possibly approaching the competition that starts at around $24,000 in the States. Following its debut in New York, the next Forester will be arriving in showrooms later in the second half of the year.